Let me begin by saying congratulations, class of 2011. Give yourselves a round of applause. I, I also learned as I was waiting um, uh, that the lacrosse team did win, and so some of your classmates are over at RIT playing. Well, you heard in my bio that I'm on the board of RIT, so the best I can say is, may the best team win. I am honored to be here to mark this momentous occasion with faculty, family, friends, and of course, the class of 2011. But I do hope that I can share one or two things that will resonate with you and stay with you. One thing I know is that what you really want is brevity. That makes you a challenging audience, though, because I am one of the few things standing between you and your special moment to walk across this stage and receive your well-deserved degree. I think back to my undergraduate commencement, and frankly, the members, memories are a bit unfocused. Now, that's hard for me to stay, say standing here as a former Kodak person. Nothing's supposed to be unfocused. But reflecting back brought to mind something that I ran across, which said, you know you've been out of college too long when the undergraduates have always had Voicemail. They've always had cable, or rather satellite TV. They cannot fathom not having a remote control. And popcorn has always been cooked in the microwave. You also know you've been out of college too long when they don't have a, a clue as to what a typewriter is, let alone a Mimeo machine. But I hope they at least know what it is. So parents, are you starting to feel a little too old? Well, don't. I prefer to think of it as timeless. But as Mark Twain said, age is an issue of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. I like to think of age as another way of saying wise. And I assume that is why colleges ask people like me to give a few words of wisdom on, at graduations. I called my friend Gaynell Weathers, who heads Multicultural Affairs here at Nazareth, and said, what would really interest college students? She was very helpful. Thank you, Gaynell. Graduates, you have spent the last two to four plus years earning a degree at Nazareth. While you have mastered the rest requisite coursework and skills for your profession, I know that Nazareth's mission has also been to inspire in you the ideal of service to your communities. In fact, Nazareth invited you to study here in part because you fit their ideal of someone who wants to make a difference in your own world and the world around you. While here, faculty and advisors have encouraged you to develop understanding commitment, and confidence to lead a fully informed and actively engaged life. Now, leading an actively engaged life includes making a difference, as you've heard earlier. My first challenge to you is to become the change that you want to see. This is not to suggest that you're not making a difference already, but to encourage you as you enter this next chapter of life to continue and grow that focus. For undergraduates, you're leaving what I consider to have been the best years of my life. A great deal of freedom without most of the real world responsibilities. During my last two years of undergraduate study at the University of Toledo in Toledo, Ohio, I worked full time, went to school full time, lived at home, but I paid no rent. I bought no food, I paid no utilities, I just took care of my own personal expenses. That probably resonates with you. Well, I'll tell you, I haven't seen those days since, and neither will you. It didn't get easier. When I later went back for an advanced degree, 
I was a single parent, and babysitters were not in my budget. While I was in classes, my young son often played in the corridors outside of my classroom, and that's a true story. But we made it. It is now your time. You have been prepared to handle new challenges and make your mark on the world in the coming years. In preparing for today, I wanted to excite you with information about future trends. But a few hour, after a few hours of research, I decided that you really did not want to hear about the emerging global water crisis. Clean water is a global issue, though. You probably didn't want to hear about future changes in the U.S. national infrastructure either. Yet, I do caution you, drive carefully. Crowded isolation and social hacking probably isn't of great interest today anyway. However, don't forget to guard your privacy. And what about super germs in the modern era? Started to talk about that, decided not but I do suggest that you continue to invest in hand sanitizer. One futurist referred to the decade of 2010 to 2020 as the time of troubles, characterized by catastrophic changes of great magnitude, scale, scope, and size. But I stayed away from that too. Later, I found an article which talked about an exciting concept called the informed we community. Now, this is the WE community, not the WII community. But the WE community will consist of transgenerational families with kids, parents, elders, and pets all under one happy active roof. The WE community includes Xers, Ys, Zs, and Alphas. Alphas, by the way, are, will be some of your children. But let's not forget the S-Y-L-O's, or the silos. It's the silos who will make this a happy, active roof. For those of you wondering who the S-Y-L-O's are, we are the stay young, longer generation, formerly known as the boomers. This we community is all about a more inclusive and informed, reoriented community, making us wiser, kinder, and perhaps greener, too. My question to you today, graduates, is what role will you play in this we-oriented community? You can make a difference. Be the change you want to see. Do you believe that you have what it takes to make a difference? How many of you believe you have what it takes to make a difference? Yes, you do. Now, few people do, but most believe only people like Mahatma Gandhi, Rosa Parks, Mother Teresa, Thomas Edison, Herbert Einstein, Oprah Winfrey, Bill Gates, and the like can make a difference. I believe that somewhere out there in this sea of caps and gowns, and it's probably all of those people who just made all those great noises, somewhere out in this sea of caps and gowns are a few Edisons, Teresas, and Gates. Now, not everyone does fit into this group, but everybody doesn't have to fit into this group. The truth is, every one of us is put on this earth to make a contribution and make a difference in our own unique way. Your contribution need not be a global game changer. It just needs to be something you do with the intention of doing good. My final challenge to you is to model and to insist on civility. Civility means formal politeness and courtesy and behavior and speech, or civilized conduct. Civility is at risk today. There is an increasing consensus that there is a growing lack of civility in our public and private lives. At the National Prayer Breakfast in February 2010, President Obama spoke about the erosion of civility in the public arena. He went on to say, it seems that only the older generation who grew up in the presidencies of Truman and Eisenhower have even a dim memory of what it was like when children were taught to be polite and rudeness towards one's parents, 
peers, and teacher was not tolerated. A nationwide study on civility that was conducted in 2010 surveyed 1,000 U.S. adults and found that 94% considered the general tone and level of civility in our country to be a problem. So who should be held accountable for civility? Americans are in nearly universal agreement that civility begins at home. 93% of those surveyed say parents should teach civility to children. We know that not all of our children have equal access and opportunity in this arena. That is why it is so important for us to make a difference, to advocate on their behalf, to volunteer to provide additional support and nurturing, and to give financial support to organizations serving our youth. I personally find that the time, talent, and resources that I am able to dedicate to my church and organizations such as the United Way make a huge difference in the lives of others. So I say to you graduates and to all of you who are listening, step out of your comfort zone and find your way to make a difference. The unprecedented problems of today require the polite president of yesterday. We are moving, we are depending on you to help capture that quality and help move us to the next level. Find a way to promote civility, respect, caring, and understanding of each other. Let respect for the dignity of the individual guide our behaviors toward each other. Carry with you a personal level of caring for others that reflects a genuine concern, one that will not tolerate injustice, disrespect, or absence of love toward each other. A prominent news anchor once said that it is much easier to make a buck than it is to make a difference. Be the change that you want to see. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Be the change that you want to see. Screenwriter Susan Laurie Parks puts it nicely when she wrote, and I quote, believe that the sort of life you wish to live is at this very moment just waiting for you to summon it up. And when you wish for it, you begin moving toward it, and it in turn begins moving toward you, end of quote. Start now, graduates. You are ideally placed to lead change. There is no one best time to start to make a difference in this world. You don't need to wait until you have the time in order to share some love. You don't have to wait until you make more money to share your resources. Little efforts do count, and you can start making small contributions today. Make a difference. Be the change that you want to see. Thank you, and may God bless you and your families as you go out to make a difference in this world. Thank you. Congratulations, class of 2011.